Nothing is more painful than trying to build an app, spending countless hours on authentication and project setup and all of that stuff, only to start building and be left with a wet blanket of a UI. Ain't nobody like a wet blanket. So why put yourself through that pain when it's easily avoided? Well, in this video, I'm going to introduce you to your new secret weapon, designed first, vibe coding. Now, whether you're an experienced builder or you're just getting started with AI coding, but you're riding that struggle bus a few too many stops down the line, this video is for you. This video will help you turn those ideas into UI designs that wow you. If you're new to the channel, my name's Sean. Over the last six years, I built my own SaaS to 20K MRR, scaled a marketing company to eight figures, and helped scale a startup from 100 employees to acquisition. And these days, vibe coding and building with AI is pretty much all I do. So in this video, I'm gonna walk you through a four step system that takes you all the way from problem deconstruction all the way through to fully designed mock-ups and exported code, all made possible through a new tool I stumbled upon that I will show you in step three. With code itself becoming a little bit more of a commodity each day, the people that can master this type of process will own the future. So that very bold statement aside, let's get into it. So step number one is deconstructing the problem because a great app solves a very specific problem for a specific set of people and the solution follows from that. So there's actually a great quote about this from the founder of Waze that was acquired by Google for $1.3 billion. He says, follow the problem and the rest will follow. And so the first step of this design process is that we really do need to deconstruct the real core problem that we are dealing with. So we have a prompt here, which will be available in the link below in the description. Now to start off, we're basically prompting this thing that it's a product manager with a SaaS founder's mindset and it's obsessed with solving problems. And so this whole thing is thought through from the frame of a problem first syntax, a problem first approach. We want to think through what is our core concept for this app and what is the real underlying root pain that that solves? What is the real problem that we are solving? Now, if you follow the channel, we use this specific prompt a lot when we are building. So I'm not going to go through the specifics of it. So what I am going to go through is what's different about it in this process. So typically when we use this, it's part of the development process. So it gives a very verbose output. It's talking about feature requirements, how fast certain features need to be, all of that type of stuff. So functional requirements and everything. We're not doing that here. So the first override is that we're making a Spartan overview, meaning I don't want a really verbose output. And I just want to focus on the user stories, the core problems, and the list of features with the high level UX requirements. After I've done that, I'm going to brief it on my current conception of what this app actually is. So in this example, we're building an AI first interior design app. So my concept for this app is that a user can upload an image of a blank room or a room with a bunch of furniture from it. The app can scrub all the furniture out. And then from there, based on inspiration the user has, they can design a room from scratch. So we say exactly that. We break down who it's for specifically because this is for homeowners and renters that are more DIY. They don't want to go hire an interior designer for many thousands of dollars to do this. And then from there, I provide my current thought on what this MVP actually is. So we have like a little demo onboarding so the user can immediately see the value. They can create their own chat. There's some functionality within that. They can identify furniture in the room and remove it. And they can continue to have this like back and forth conversation about what they want in the room. And then from there, we'll use a tool like Nano Banana, for example, to go out and actually build that image for them. Now, I know that this is a pain because it's something that I am specifically dealing with where I'm in the process of remodeling my house and I wanted to have a nice backdrop for my office. And so I was able to use this system to go from this very blank looking room to this really nice looking room using this exact system. So I know what the pains are associated with trying to do this and what the shortfalls are of current solutions to this problem. Now, once we've passed that through, here's what we get out the other side. So what we get from this is a little bit of an executive summary about you know who this app is and what problems it is solving. 
And then we go into specific user stories and then specific features within our app and what they are meant to do. So from the demo experience, fully through to saving and organizing these rooms that you have designed. And then we go through and break down our MVP feature list with, again, the high level UX of what we want this thing to look like. Because you can have something that technically does a thing well, but if the user doesn't have a solid experience with those features and it doesn't flow well for them, then it doesn't really matter and they're going to abandon the app. And so the next stage of this is that we want to take all of these outputs that we just had and we want to turn them into something that's going to work from a design perspective. We want to think through what are all of the little micro interactions within each of those feature screens and then start building out visual mocks of what it looks like with each of those features. And so I have another prompt here, which again will be in the description below, which is basically taking that output that we just got and it's turning it into something that is going to actually work with the tool I'm about to show you. And so what the output consists of is a high level foundational design system that works for this tool. And then a map of each of the screen states for all of those features. So for example, if it's generating a final design, what does that actually look like for the user though? Because if we were to just go prompt this in and tell Claude or Cursor to build this thing, there's a lot of ambiguity in terms of what you could actually decide to show the user and how the user interacts with it. And so we want to start getting very, very, very specific in terms of what this thing actually looks like and how it's meant to function. So step number three, we need to now take those screen maps and turn them into actual visual designs. And the tool that we are going to be using to do that is Stitch. So the best way to think about Stitch, if you don't know what it is, is it's kind of like Figma, but for vibe designing. And so instead of having to go in and become an expert of a tool like Figma, we can have an experience that's very much like using a tool like Lovable, for example, but it's just focused on building the actual screen designs. It's not generating code, it's mocking up the actual interface. Now, a few very quick notes. It seems to only be able to make six screens at a time. So if you were to give it 12 screens, it's going to batch them. Second note, you want to be either incredibly vague or incredibly specific about what you want it to mock up. For example, if I was to come in and say, hey, I have an interior design app that's supposed to do this thing. Go generate me a bunch of inspiration for this thing. It can do that pretty well. Or number two, you need to be incredibly specific about what you want. I'm going to show you both outputs. So what we are going to do is we're going to hop back into our output from Claude. And now we have these stitch specific design prompts. Now I experimented a lot to come up with this specific prompt because there are best practices for prompting with stitch that you need to conform to or else you're going to get really shit outputs. And so the first thing that we are going to do is we're going to copy this foundation and we're going to paste that in. And then we want to essentially take an entire screen definition and paste that in. So we are going to go screen by screen, which again, gets you better results than me pasting in all of my screens at once. Now, after we've done this, we can choose the option to have it build for an app or the web. In this case, I'm going to build it for like an app interface. And then you have an option for experimental mode or standard mode. We are going to keep it in experimental mode because we tend to get better outputs. So now I'm going to let this thing ride and we'll look at the output. So now we have our very first screen designed for this thing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause real quick and I'm going to go just simply copy paste in a bunch more of these prompts. Nothing spooky going on behind the scenes. And then we'll look at what each of these screens looks like. And boom, there we go. So we did that for, I think, five of the screens. And let's just zoom in for a second and take a look at them. So this is our chat conversation view, which is a pretty nice like on-brand chat interface. We created a loading state, which again is really nice. And it's matching the actual aesthetic of what we want it to be. Here's an example where they would show you a finished design for your room, right? So you could imagine that this was just a blank wall that the user had uploaded and they said they wanted it to be, you know, Scandinavian and minimalist. And this is what it gave back. They could save it to the gallery. 
and then they can go through and look at all of the designs that they had saved. So let me show you a few quick features of this that are pretty cool. So if we went in here, say, and we wanted to create a variation of this, we can just click on the image and you'll see it loaded into the context over here. And we could then say, make a version of this page with the requested features in a collapsed state, right? Because right now it's, it's taking up a good amount of the space. And so what if I wanted that actually collapsed? What it's going to do is it's going to go through and it's going to take this core screen and it is going to iterate on it. And so there's a lot of these really helpful little tools inside of the app that help you tweak and dial in your design. So if we were to go into another one of these views and we clicked on it, we can come in and adjust the theme. We could come through and annotate, meaning we can come through and actually leave comments on specific sections, right? So I could come up and hit this and say, make, make this a visual before and after slider, for example. So we can come through and mark up the entire design and it is going to go through and generate us a new variant based on that feedback. And so if we were to go back to this other screen that we were looking at, we can now see what it looks like when it has a collapsed design. Now, like I said, it also works pretty well when you have an open-ended prompt. And so in this example, I said I wanted to create a chat-based mental model problem solver. A user inputs a problem and it uses common mental models to help them think through. And so it went through and decided what those screens might look like and then generated us a pretty nice looking design for this thing where we have this gamified onboarding where the user types in what their challenge or their struggle is. From there, they pick a mental model that they want to use to help solve this thing. From there, it pumps that into a new chat interface that again is gamified with a number of steps. We have this nice example chat where we have these cool little badges indicating that, you know, some accomplishment was made, like someone actually dialed in on what their problem was using second order thinking, for example. We have this trophy room, which I would probably rename this, that has a backlog of insights that you have pulled out based on chats. And then, well, what would it look like if we wanted to click into one of these? Then we have a narrative playback of what the chat actually consisted of and what were the major mile markers along the way. So this is really great because we can already start really visualizing our MVP. And this means when we go to build this thing, we're not just leaving it up to the language model to fill in the blanks for us. We're being very specific and detailed about what this thing needs to look like. And then we can translate this into actual functional components. So full disclosure, if you were inside of a real SaaS company, they typically have product designers that do this very thing inside of a tool like Figma. So if a company was branching out and saying, hey, I need to build this net new feature, you're gonna have the backend engineers and the senior tech leads that are defining the architecture of that thing and the APIs and how the business logic is gonna work. And at the same time, a designer is building out screens like this that are interactive and give a sense of what this app might actually look like and how it's going to function. And then they use that to get feedback from internal stakeholders, maybe even key accounts that they have and see if it's intuitive and what they would want changed. Once this is done, it gets passed to a front end engineer that can actually go build out the UI components, build out the logic, make all the animations actually work and all of that great stuff. So now that we have these screens, there's not a lot of ambiguity about what we're going to build from a front end perspective. Now, the thing that's cool is for each of these screens, we can do one of two things. Number one, we could just download the image. Number two, we can actually look at the code. So if we were to go into this screen, for example, and go to view code, we can actually see the HTML that powers this page. Now, the reason this is really great is that we can pass this into a tool like Cursor and tell it, I want you to transform this into a React Native screen, which it is actually very good at doing. And so that's great because we can take every single screen that we have here, prompt it into a tool like Cursor or Claude Code, convert it to React Native, and then we are off and running with a functional UI mockup. From there, it's just a matter of defining the architecture for the app and creating the actual backend and APIs that are going to power this thing.
Now, if you want to see a video on how I do that specifically, let me know in the comments below and I can record one of my next videos on how we take these screens and turn them into an actual working application using an approachable tool like Cursor AI or Clog Code. So the reason this workflow works is that a design first approach is not extra work. In fact, it's anti work because it allows us to skip that build and pray and iterate cycle where we have this really convoluted backend that we built, which is hooked into these front end components. And now we're trying to iterate on the front end components and we're breaking things left and right. And so we can build more advanced stuff more quickly and do away with that whole rotting pile of ugly half completed MVPs. So if you wanna see more videos like this one, make sure to subscribe. And again, let me know below if you want to see how we can translate this into functional code. That is it for this video though. I will see you in the next one.